Blog Talk Radio. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Jets Radio, the fan series. And what this series is, we're just interviewing fans, talking just about the team, the history, life of being a Jets fan, and everything else. This is your host, Tyson Rouse. You can follow me on Twitter, at T-R-A-U-C-H-21. You can follow this show, at Talk Jets Radio. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're pretty much everywhere. The show is on iTunes and YouTube and everywhere else. So this one, this this is going to be a really, really fun interview because this is going to be Paul Parisi, who's the same age as me. So I'm sure we have a lot of the same stories. So this is going to be fun. Paul, this is Tyson. What's up, man? What's going on, Tyson? How you doing? Dude, I'm doing great. First off, man, thank you for your time on this Sunday. I definitely appreciate it. Awesome. No problem. Usually I listen right. to you guys every day when I, when I go grocery shopping on Saturday. I always throw the podcast on. Uh, dude, I appreciate that. So let's start off from the beginning, man. What, what made you a Jets fan? How did this all come about for you? How it came about, and it was probably one of the worst situations ever. It was the Mud Bowl against the Dolphins with oh. A.J. Dewey. Yeah, you see, I, I already heard it in your voice. And for some reason, I got attracted to the Jets. I don't know if I felt bad for them or whatever the case was, but right then and there, I was like, that's my team. Richard Todd, eh, you know, he was all right. And then, you know, yeah. going into the Kenny O'Brien, which honestly, I think he's very underrated in the Jets, yep. you know, Jets history. He was dude, very he was, good, yeah. Dude, in, in 86, he was phenomenal. They were 10-1. and 1. He was phenomenal. He was, he was playing lights out. Oh, totally agree. And, and my problem is, is that, oh, well, we could have had Marino. Yeah, Marino, Hall of Famer, all of uh, the accolades, all of the records. But what does he want? Same thing Kenny O'Brien has, you know? And Kenny O'Brien took a beating, man. He, took, he would get just destroyed behind that offensive line. He would take beating after beating. And get back up and keep playing. It was he was. I agree. I always had I always had a, like a soft spot for him, man. Because I felt so bad for him. And over the years, he always got criticized so much. But he 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 had some incredible games, man. And 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 believe it or not, Pennington reminded me of him. O'Brien didn't have a strong arm. Pennington didn't. But they had accuracy. That yep. that was uncanny. But uh, And then, you know, with me just growing up, I was the biggest Mark Gastineau fan in the SAC exchange. That's what – I mean, you had Lawrence Taylor across town, but we had, you know, Gastineau, and that was it for me. Yeah, dude. I mean, there's, there was some really – yeah, the whole Cucko and all those guys too. I mean, it's – there's a lot of, like, different – you know, a lot of fans have different groups to hang on to, but I could, I could definitely see that. What are your, some of your favorite memories for this team? Uh, just it, it's very hard because they're very few and far between. I will remember the the playoff run when the Jets snuck in there at eight and eight. I'll never forget that one. And then uh, you know the the Vinny years were great with with Parcells and the thirteen nothing lead against Denver. I was like, we're winning, we're going to the Super Bowl. And then yep. the the muffed punt, uh, everything went sideways. And I think if we got there, we would we would have won the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, they were, they already beat Atlanta that year, and they were just the best. They were the best in the football, man. The Jets were just on a different page than everybody else at that point. It was that was probably the one of the most that was uh, that that game brought back so much anger out of me because it, it, guys that would never fumble fumbled. Any mistake that could happen happened, and it's just oh. That and, was, and, that was, and then sometimes we we feel as Jet fans that we're cursed. We we really yeah. are. It, yeah, it is I mean, so tough to be crazy. a fan of this. And, and then the next year we start off, I said, we're going to the Super Bowl. No, yep. Vinny tears his Achilles. I literally died that day. Yep. Screaming that was, at the TV when he tore his Achilles. That was, that was the first time I, like, I was there. That was the first time I ever walked into a season where I like, like, you know, as fans, you always say, we're going to Super Bowl, we're going to Super Bowl. We, you know, sometimes we believe, sometimes we, we don't, but we're just fans. That was the first time I entered a season with so much confidence. I'm like, we're the best team. Like, we are going. Like, this is it. Our time. Like, as a Jets fan, we finally had some swagger. Like, this is – it was an unbelievable feeling. We're sitting there in the stadium. The state, the, the pregame, the, the tailgate was like a party. Like, we were all just so excited. And I had, right before – when it happened, I'm like, I can't believe this. Went right to the beer vendor. I'm like, two beers. I'm like, this is it. Like, our season's <laughs> over. And we're not even – like, 
And it's like you could even when Tom Tupa came in and played well, like we knew it was over. Like we just it was just done. I've never oh it, what a change of emotion a for Jets fans. It was crazy. It was fourteen minutes in and I'm just like yep. screaming. What did this is our season's done. Season's done. That's all I kept saying. And then yep. the Rick Meyer experiment was awful. Oh. He went too late to Ray Lucas, which he did serviceable. Ray Lucas was, mm -hmm. you know, good game manager. And with that defense, and they ran the ball, just like with Rex and Sanchez. You know, those yep. couple of years, Thomas Jones was a beast. He was yep. one of my favorite Jets, the way he ran the ball. And, and the defense, that's, that's winning. And even, like, you look at this year, all oh, scoring, 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 you're still running the ball. That, that's the yep. key. No, no arguments here, man. That, there's, there was always that comment that I'm there, whether it was Thomas Jones or Curtis Martin or whatever it was. You had that, that the ability to you know ground the ball, you know ground the ball out, you know wind the clock out, control the time of possession, do all those different things, and that it makes a huge difference. And with what we've lacked for the last couple of years, you know, it's just it, it's <laughs> it's tough, man. Looking back at some of these moments, especially the last three years, and now you look at this year, man. Like, what do you? You know, this, this team is going through another rebuild. Now it's under Joe Douglas and Adam Gase. What are your thoughts on this team, man? Uh, I get into a lot of Twitter fights. And I, I say I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not. And then I can't resist. You know, people are, are, are so down on our coach. And I'm like, guys, it, it, this is who we got. This, this is it. And if you don't think him and G.O.D. are, are attached at the hip, they are. It, it, and everybody should be thankful in a weird way that Gates got rid of Mac. The way the Jets organization ran last year was the biggest shit show I've ever seen. Him do free agency and, and drafting all these people when you know yep. he's awful at drafting. McCagney, he backwards. murdered yep. this franchise. Yeah, he hit on Jamal. I could have did that. You know, May, May's a, a solid player. Honestly, he's going to be traded. I don't think they're keeping him. Yep. You're not going to pay two safeties top dollar, and you got to give the bank to Jamal. But did you? Did you? Now I listen. I went on a rampage for about a week when they fired McCagney when they did, and people called me crazy. And I'm like, it sets it sets us back two years the way they did it. But the time, I mean, it, it had to be done. But were you? Did you agree with the Gase hire initially? No, I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a yeah. fan. I, I wasn't high on rule. I didn't know much about him. I, I was just. I wanted somebody just in for Sam, you know, to, to, to get the best out of them. And then I did not realize how bad, how spoiled we were with the brick of Shaw Ferguson and yeah. mangled. And then the Fanicas yeah. and then the, uh, the Moors, you know, without an offensive line, I don't care who is back there. I don't care. We, we're going to last year look like a David Carr syndrome. Our quarterbacks yep. got sacked 52 times in a year. Yep. That's unheard no. of, and that's just from negligence, from just not drafting any offensive linemen. No, dude, I, I, I can't agree with you more. You know, it, it, it's so funny you say that because we just – this is great because you're the same age as I am, man, and it's like the whole, the whole Parcells discussion kind of comes here with me where it's like when they, when they fired, you know, the and the Bulls, I'm like, all right, you know, or they fired, well, they fired Bulls first, obviously, but it's like – Almost, I almost felt like they needed a Parcells presence in this locker room. Like yeah. that, that kind of master motivator, disciplinary, where it's like, we're going to clean up this shit show because it's a mess. Like, players are running the locker room. We have no idea what we're doing. We have no direction. We have no identity. And then you bring in Gase, which is like, all right, not the guy I wanted either. I mean, at this, to be completely honest, I mean, I would have did McCarthy. I would have did Rule. I wanted somebody different, somebody just – I just did not want Gase for a litany of reasons. But then he's here, yep. so it's like okay. Agreed. But then it's like, so then it's like, all right, we got him, and now then it's like it's, it's twofold. You bring in a coach you kind of don't like, and then you realize how barren the roster is. Like we had so many friggin' holes, and then you you bring in your general manager after the facts. So now he's like he really can't do much. I mean, he made some moves here and there. I mean, whatever. He did some good. He did some bad. So basically, last year was a wash, and now yeah. the, the point oh. you, the point you hit on is perfect because now it's like that wash year with all those sacks on Sam Darnold, gives you concerns. Like, dude, the kid, the kid was getting happy feet. He was seeing ghosts. He was, he was doing things you don't want to see. And now you got to hope you correct them all this offseason. So it's like, ay ay ay, man. And with everything going on, he, he should have been living at the Jets facility since draft yep. day. And, and we can't, he can't even travel. 
You know, nope. he's working out on the beach with Josh Allen. Yep. It's it it's it's concerning, man. So you look at this, and now it's like they made a, a litany of moves to, to fix the offensive line. Obviously, the, the draft pick Beckton, who's a freak athlete, some journeyman guys, a proven guy, McGovern. What are your thoughts on the revamped offensive line? Honestly, no matter what they did, it was an improvement of last year. They could have had my 19-year-old daughter and her four friends be better than what that line was last year. I went to the Browns game. Yeah, we didn't have Sam. I was pissed, got tickets, perfect seats. All of a sudden, you know, he comes out in the press conference, 14, we'll be out indefinitely. I died. You know, we go to the game. We can play with Cleveland. Our defense will keep us in. Simeon, you know, just don't lose the game. Yep. Miles Garrett murders them three straight <laughs> plays in a row. And I'm looking at it, and I literally was watching this game, and I look at my son, and I go, Mace, how long did that take? He goes, two seconds, Dad. I swear to God they were in the backfield in two seconds. Yep. I've never seen – everybody's like, oh, well, let's just resign Beecham. No, he was part of the problem. He was awful last year, you know? And, and I – everybody's like, we need a wide receiver, you know, number 11. We need a wide receiver. I'm like, no, we don't. And when I'm watching the draft, at work, and I'm seeing all these defensive players and quarterbacks. I'm like, we're getting one. If he doesn't take a tackle, I'm going to throw something through my computer screen at work. Because that's, I was like, second round, we'll grab a receiver. There's, yep. There was 50 receivers on the board. You know? No, no, no arguments here. And, and I'm uh, happy with the pick. People are like, well, you know, he smoked pot. So did Laramie Tunsil. You know, these, these kids are, you know, stupid. And they're really not going to be drug testing for marijuana. Well, see, the, not even, but Paul, to be honest with you, the, the, the thing with him about the whole drug test was one thing. I, I don't really care about that. The only thing that is a potential concern, and we did a bunch of draft analysts that came on and stuff like that. It was like his ability to deal with speed rushers, pass rushers, his flexibility, yep. ability, ability to turn, and that's going to be trial by fire with him. I think that people that say they know what he is right now is kind of crazy because we don't really know that, and that's something he's got to prove and no. work on. But that, if there was one concern of any of them, that would probably be it. Yeah, the only thing we know from him is he's huge and is an animal. That's it. Yep. That's all we yep. know. And, and yep. that's, yeah, I'm not sold on the offensive line coach because he didn't do shit last year with that line. I don't that know how he kept his job. <laughs> I'm 48 years old, and I've never seen an offensive line that bad. I've never yep. seen – it, it was awful. And, yeah, honestly, with Gase – I, I never wanted him, never wanted him, but I'm like, you know what? He's our coach. It is what it is. And actually he, he cracks me up now. I, I die at some of the shit because he don't give a shit. He don't care. No, he don't. Nope. He doesn't. And, but see, I think that, but see, I think to be honest with you, that works against him a little bit too. Like him being smug yeah, he's and an arrogant. Could be, yeah. But it's like, you know what? If you have somewhat of a personality or can at least relate to the fans, it buys you a little bit of wiggle room. Like, especially when you come in an environment yeah. where half of them don't like you to begin with, like, he, they, unfortunately, in New York with this fan base, you got to play the media game a little bit. you got to give us that warm and fuzzy feeling a little bit so we don't just constantly want to just – you know what I mean? It's just – he does that, but it's just whatever. We'll go we'll get off that. But the other thing is <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned getting a wide receiver. This was my biggest concern going into the offseason. Like I know obviously yep. upgrade the offensive line, which I knew Joe Douglas was going to do. That's his background. But to me, it's like give Sam weapons, a lot of weapons, make these guys building blocks for the future. And did they do that? I, I mean – what are your thoughts on Perryman? Perryman, he's the wild card, honestly, because, yeah, you look at the last five games, he was great, you know, with that offense, with this. Right now, if he doesn't show up for the Jets, basically he's going to be out of the league. That's the way I look at it. He has to come and show. Um, Robbie, I was not a huge Robbie fan. He, he was great. You know what? He's going to run from post to post. Him going across the middle, he was too small. He was 175. You know, he, he would be able to beat, beat, beat players, and, and he would come down with balls, but I didn't – I never thought he was our huge number one. Never thought that. My thing is, did they upgrade? I don't know. I think Mims is going to be good. Mims gives us 650 and six touchdowns. I'll sign up for that now. You know, that's not that far less than what Robbie had last year. Yeah, Robbie didn't have, you know, Sam for four weeks, so the numbers are skewed. Right. But I mean, you know, my, you biggest, think my biggest weapon, believe it or not, and I'm hanging on the rim with him, and you're probably going to kill me, is Herndon. 
he is such a mm-hmm. difference maker if he's healthy and got his head on straight. Dude, I'm not. Dude, I'm not. I'm a Herndon fan. I expected a lot of him this year. It's like he's got to stay healthy and he's got to stay out of trouble, and then he's a force because. I'm not – I mean, I'm getting roasted for it, but I'm not sold in the wide receivers. I'm just not. Like, they all have so much to prove. Crowder's the only known commodity. Perryman, listen, the Jets add a ton of speed. If Adam Gase doesn't open up the offense and actually throw the ball deep, it makes no difference then. And then it's like, all right, what, you know, Doxon and, and all these other guys. And the worry I have about Mims is that I think he's, he's a hell of a talent. No doubt about that. But I think our expectations as fans, because we want receivers so friggin' bad that we want so much from year one, like – we want that 75 and 1,000 and eight touchdowns. And all. We got to be able to listen. Like, we got to like, keep it all in perspective that he's probably not going to get those numbers. Like, the numbers you said are completely real. Like, that's cool. Like, those are realistic numbers. And then hopefully a year from now it kicks in, and then he's like a much better player. But I just wish they had more at wide receiver, to be honest with you. And I think with the, the, the cuts in June and July, for some reason, I don't know why, I have a feeling we're going to get Alshon Jeffrey. I think oh. he's going to get cut by Philly, and I think Joe Douglas is just going to jump on him. I don't think even Doxon's going to be on the roster, to be honest with you. I don't. Yeah, it wouldn't I surprise think, me. You know, Mims, Perryman, Crowder, you know, I don't know anything about these unrestricted free agents. This cager looks like a beast. He looks huge. Yep. You know, um, and, if he, and you know what, and this is Gase's biggest thing. He's got to put Bell split out. You've got to have him up against a linebacker. He will, yep. he will make the linebackers look stupid, you know? And it's just, yep. I think those four games Sam was out, I honestly think Gase just said, you know what, we're just going to play. I think he mailed it in. I, yep. I don't think he had anywhere to go at all. And then once Simeon went down, he was dead. We had Luke Falk out there, which the guy's not yep. even in the league. Nope. You know? And then everybody, I remember a couple of uh, shows ago, about a month ago, and they're, what's a David Fails? I was like, he's going to be the third quarterback in the room, if even on the roster. I, I still think they're going to go after more for some reason because yeah, of Gage's connection. Yeah, definitely. We need, uh, or even bring back, uh, what's his name? Josh, bring him back. I don't care. Just something, somebody said we're not try. We're not going to try it out this rookie. This rookie's not even going to be active but it, at but all. See, but it's, it's twofold, though. But see, Paul, it's two. This, this is what pisses me off about Gates. This this backup quarterback is twofold. First of all, is when, if if Sam gets hurt or whatever else, you have a guy that can actually come in and win games for you, or at least have you compete. David yeah. Fails ain't going to let you compete. Dude. You're not. You're not. Like, you're, you're basically saying we're not going to compete. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is a McCown, a Flacco, a Matt Moore. It's a veteran sounding board for a very young quarterback. How can that be a bad thing? Like you, like it, it's at not. some point, you at some point you tune out your coach. Like you're like you know this guy pissed him. Like then you have the other guy in the middle, like that, like the messenger in between. Like all right, listen, this is what you want to do. This is what you want to say, and that helps Sam. Like if you need, if you bring in Frank Gore as a veteran to help out the young running back, I was like, why would you not want a veteran for the quarterbacks? Like it's driving me insane, man. Yeah, he, and with Joe Douglas, there's no way he's going to let that happen because he saw in Philly firsthand. Your quarterback yep. goes down, you need somebody. Exactly. And, and we should know firsthand what happened last year. That was awful. Yep. These games were unwatchable. Yep. Yeah, that pissed me. That, that, that it, drove me. It, it, set me, it set me back 10 years in anger with that shit. Yeah, last year was, was one of the roughest years as a Jet fan because no matter what, I'm rooting. You know, we're one and seven, yep. and I'm rooting. And I'm not going to, you know, put Gase a statue up, but that team could have went one and 15. That yep. team could have folded. You know, yeah, Greg Williams, he, he gets a ton of respect because he kept that defense in. You're going to, you know, and did Sam against Dallas? He played awesome. We weren't supposed yep. to be Dallas at home. It was, and that just shows you the flashes. Perryman, I look at it. He's, he's got to show us something or he's going to be out of the league. So he's, that's why some of these one-year contracts, they're prove-it deals, and I think he will go and try to re-up with them during the season. Jordan Jenkins, I was hit or miss. I would take Golden in a second over him. Oh, I've, Dude, I've been, I've been calling that's, for him for four months now. Like, it's just, and the, the I don't reason want why Clowney. Is, no, dude, we, I cannot agree with you more. First thing is, Jordan Jenkins coming back at $3.5 million is a complete steal. I, I like him for a yeah. variety of reasons, but listen – He's getting better every year as a pass rusher. The guy works his ass off, leader, hard, you know, hardworking, high character, perfect fit. At that price, even better. Clowney 
is, is just he's a one year rental. I and mean, now the whole thing is, well, it's only eleven million. I don't even want to pay him eleven million. Like I don't want him at all. Like it's just no you can he's, get gold and gold for half the price. Yeah, you, you can get gold for half the it. price, give him a two year deal. <laughs> Ten sacks. I mean, how many sacks did Clowney had? Four last year? Uh, like, two? Jordan Jenkins it's had eight. Terrible. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's Clowney's a and name, this guy's man. So People get attached with names. Price. Yeah, never yep. wanted him. I was just like, stay away. Yeah, you want to give me another offensive lineman? Bring him in. I don't care. Yep. <laughs> Anything that keep that can keep Sam upright. And this is, you know, people are like, oh, pressure for Sam, pressure for Sam. It is to an extent, but the people forget he's 23 years old when the yep. season starts. That's it. He, this is going to be third year of learning. I mean, we got a guy 10 years from now. He's still only 33. Are yeah, you, you kidding me? You, yeah, but you have to – well, listen, I agree. Some of these articles are complete horseshit. But I, you'd have to agree that this is a big step year for him. Like, we all kind of want to take a big step last year, but this has got to be time where it's year two of the offense. Like, he's got to take a, a pretty big jump ahead yeah. where he can start – he can overcome bad play calling. He can overcome bad, you know, questionable wide receiver play. Like, he can make everybody better around him. Like, he's got to start making that progression yeah. now. Yeah, and he, he'll make some throws that are unbelievable. Then somewhere yep. I'm like, oh, you should have ate it. Just throw it away. Yep. But he doesn't yep. seem like he's that type. He wants to make a play every single time. And, you know, and, and that, that can curse him. Yep. No, he has that, like, only that Brett Favre thing where he keeps, like, he just wants to make a play out of anything. It's like, all right, cool, listen. And I love the thing that refused to lose. But at the same time, when he started getting happy feet and just getting reckless with the football, I'm like, that's what you can't have, especially when the game's on the line or you're trying to do it. Like, those are times you can't do that kind of stuff. Um, going to the defense now, we touched on Jordan Jenkins. What are your thoughts on all the corners they brought in? Do you think the, the secondary play is going to be a lot better? It, it I'm going to do the same analogy I do with the offensive line. With Roberts and Tremaine Johnson, who just quit on us, these guys, yep. I mean, believe it or not, I thought Mollett played good last year. Yep, me too. Um, Pierre Desaire, I, I'm, I don't know a thing. Uh, you look at his numbers last year, they were terrible, but the year before they were great. So you don't know what we're getting with him. I look at it, no matter what they did, it, it was an up. And Greg Williams, I've got so much confidence in him that he can put he, – he can, he, he's, he's a magician as, as a defensive coordinator. And, yeah, and with listen, our – Norris here. Good. Yeah, our defensive line between um, – you know, I, Q I think is going to have a bounce back here. And again – kid's only 22 years old too you know yep. he was hurt last year he missed a couple of games and you know ankles uh, and, and our linebackers i don't know if they're going to keep avery everybody's like oh i want to keep him want to keep him still seven million dollars right there yeah he he you know and I, listen i'm an avery williamson fan but i to me it's like when they signed five thousand middle linebackers i'm like i think the kind of writings on the wall here that once they have the opportunity to sign either a golden or somebody else that money is going to be Either him or Winters are going. Some, one of those two are going to go. To get the See, I, I honestly to think they else. both are. Yep. I think they're both they going, could. to be honest with you. Because yep. Cashman, can, you can use in coverage. Mostly, hopefully he's healthy, God forbid, the whole year. Birch has played serviceable. Hewitt wasn't bad. We've got six linebackers yep. in the middle the linebacker. The guy from Baltimore, the guy Peanut. Yep. This, yeah, yep. that they signed to replace Mosley. Yep. It, yeah, yeah it so I think Avery and Winters are on the chopping block, and that's where I think we're going to see some sort of veteran receiver somewhere. I don't know if it's Stills. I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Stills. It reminds me of Robbie, you know? Yep. Not a, not a big guy. I, I, I want the big guys that are fast, I'm, you know? Yeah, no, no arguments here, man. Now, what do you think about this we, while we're on the defense? What do you think about this Jamal Adams potential contract saga where it's like, his demands are out of this world or whatever else. How do you think this plays out? See, me, I, I'm kind of stubborn. We, we have all the, you know, Jamal has no leverage. We can let him play this year and still hit him with the tags. Yes, he can become a pain in the ass and bitch and moan and this. I wanted, but he does deserve a new contract. That's why I think he'll get his contract, and I think May's going to be gone, especially with them drafting this rookie that can play the same position as May. But would you but would you pay would you say in theory, quote unquote, overpay Adams just to keep him in the fold for the next five years? Or do you hold ground where you're like, listen, man, you know, it, like say intelligence says you're only worth fifteen million a year, 
we're not giving you 17 million a year. How, would you just pay him to get that deal done to keep him as a building block? Yeah, I think I would. Cause we don't have enough stars with our team and he's Sam is our future, but he's not like Jamal. He's not going to yep. pump up the team. He's not going to, you know, he is our heartbeat of our team. No matter what he yep. says, look at his numbers for the first three years. They are the best numbers. He's, you know, I don't want to say he's in Ed Reed's zone, but if he keeps playing the way he is, he's a lock. Yep. You know, yeah, I, he's total opposite I, of Revis. Revis never <laughs> said a word. You know, Revis was all about money. Jamal, there's no way. And people are like, well, he could sit out. He ain't going to sit out. He loves the game too much. Yeah, he's going to sit out uh, preseason games. Who cares? Lawrence Taylor never, never played a set snap. Yep. No, I, listen, I agree with you. I, I, to, and I keep saying it. Like, to me, there's, there's, there's very rare players. He's one of them, and I pay him. And I understand he's going to be a pain in the ass. He wants all the money in the world. Give it to him. Like, I, I don't – to me, it's like we don't have that many kind of players in this roster that we have to worry about. It's him and Sam, basically. That's it. So if you, if you have yeah. to pay him, pay him. And if Joe Douglas drafts well and does other things, we don't have to worry about, like, the problem is right now the Jets are so barren at so many positions, they have to pay through free agency for all these guys to bring them in. So once that changes and you can start replenishing with your draft picks, it makes it a lot easier, I'm paying Jamal. It doesn't even bother me a bit. So we talked no. about offense, talked about defense. What is your – you know, the whole schedule came out, and people are like, oh, this schedule is so tough. The Jets aren't going to be that good. They're going to go. What is your perception of this team going into the season? Like, what are your expectations? I call bullshit on that whole schedule because if you really look at it, all right, you got um, San Francisco coming in here week two, one o'clock game, going across, you know, the time zones and everything. I'm not sold on Jimmy G. I'm sold on their defense. They lost Emmanuel Sanders. They lost Matt Breida. They lost a lot of players, too. Their defense is going to be top five, easy. But other than that, besides Russell Wilson and Pat Mahomes, what quarterbacks are scaring us on that schedule? That's what's boggling my mind. Everybody's like, schedule so hard, so hard, so hard. I'm like, who scares you besides Mahomes and Russell Wilson? Yep. So you you're, expecting this, team, you're expecting this team to play much better. You're expecting a very a cohesive unit playing much better on both sides of the football. No matter what happens, our defense is going to keep us in every game, except maybe I'll, I'll throw it out there to Kansas City. In Kansas, you know, I'm going to say that. Our defense is going to keep us in every game. No matter what I would expect, you know, I expect nine wins this year. I do. Maybe I'm uh, drinking the Kool-Aid, but the schedule really does not scare me. No quarterback puts fear in me except Russell Wilson and Mahomes. Josh Allen yeah, doesn't they, twice a year. Stidham doesn't twice a year. Uh, the two uh, Fitzpatrick. I mean, come on. Everybody's making these guys out the schedule. Our defense is going to be top eight easily. Easily. Whoa, oh, eight? Top eight? <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the return of Mosley is going to be huge. I'll give you that. Return of Mosley. You have we, new corners that are – I mean – I, I just, to be honest, I just want a pass rusher. Like, just give me Golden, and I'll be more we confident. We have one. It's Jamal. <laughs> our best yeah, well, pass you, rusher you, you is you our safety. Could, <laughs> you actually could do that if you put Ashton Davis back there with May and let Jamal just run amok at the line of scrimmage. You actually could do that. But That's what it, I think it, that you're, we're going to see a lot. Yep. I think, and why I think won't so they too. sign Golden? They can sign him for $5 it. million. Yep. The I, Giants I put it. this bullshit tag on him. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, like, I watch, like, I watch him, like, I'm like, I watch him, I watch his work ethic, his explosiveness, it's like, it just all fits, it's like, it's exactly what you need, like, it just, it makes sense, <laughs> like, I don't know, if, but, so then you, you're thinking nine wins, um, you know, for me, to be honest with you, if, if this team wins six games, and Sam is playing lights out, and they're in close games, and they lose, I'm fine with that, like, my whole goal is, this has to be the year where this offense starts taking off, and Sam plays yeah. much, much better, because that's why Gabe's Obviously, he's brought to win games, but the, we need to see what we have in this quarterback. He needs to start maximizing all our potential. And if this team's like a high-flying team and like they're losing you know, 31-27, they're in every game and they, a couple bad breaks, I'm fine with it. But if this is one of those where we're losing to bad teams and our offense is stuck in mud and Le'Veon Bell's only got you know 700 yards, and, and then it's like, all right, this is this. I physically you know, don't this, know if I can go through that again. <laughs> no. I really don't know if I could take it. But let me ask you this. Let me turn it on you. Sam mm -hmm. has a great year. Let's say 3,500 yards, uh, 30 touchdowns, say 17 interceptions. And he improves. Offense goes from 32 up to 
mid twenties. Does mm-hmm. Gay say? Yep. Even though I think they're he's, showing I progression. Think, yep. They're, I think he's staying. They have it. See, my personal opinion is that they this is kind of a wash year for Joe Douglas, where he's starting to weed out the contracts he doesn't want, weed out the players he doesn't want. All these one-year contracts reflect that because next year the guys he wants to keep, they're going to have a hundred million dollars of cap space. He keeps all of them, and he brings in a whole other, you know, a whole other group. Like I, I just think they have like a almost like a built-in excuse. Like, listen, this is our first chance to get our guys in here. You know, our system. Like, it just I have a funny feel, like. To me, it's like six games is like the benchmark. If Gates gets to six games, he comes back next year. I hate saying that. Yeah, I, I and, have way it is. And I got to be honest with you, all these Jets fans, you got to understand, this is our last year of Le'Veon Bell. That contract yep. is gone next year. Yep. That's gone. That's more money that's freed up. You know, mostly maybe a restructure. Who knows? Avery, you know, all these guys, we're going to have a lot of money, yes, but we still got to fill all these, all these spots too, which I get. But you know what? I'm dying for a pass rusher. We haven't had one since John Abraham. We haven't had. Yeah, it's see, no, killing the thing me. Is though, but Paul, here's the thing, though. They're going to have all that cast space next year. But in Joe Douglas's plan, like next year, corner. Next year, Ashton Davis replaces May. Like you can see, like yep. the kind of transition plan for a lot of these guys. And then that money you have can go to much bigger free. But that's where drafting well is going to help this team. That's why I think this year is kind of like you got to, you know, it's kind of like a wash. And it looked – what a difference, though, this draft look. When he traded down, I was like, oh, what, is he, what is he doing? And then he still got Mims. I was like, okay. When, yep. you know, we're drafting our Darius Stewart and Chad Hansen a couple of years ago. And these guys yeah. aren't even in the league anymore. Yeah, but, you know, to, in all fairness, like, the, this, is, this is where it kind of gets a little bit rough for me because there were some draft classes for Mike McCadden, and once it was done, everybody's like, oh, my God, this is why he's executive of the year. He did this, he did that, he did this. And then a year later, you're like, dude, what the hell happened? So I'm like, yeah. that's why I don't give draft grades. I hate draft grades. I hate, like, like that's why I got quiet for a while. Everybody's getting all this draft analysis. Like, oh, my God, he hit, like, six players. I'm like, what? Like, we no, know better. Just- I'd be happy if he hit on three. If he hit on three yep. out of seven, I'm happy. Yep. And you know he's going to hit on the punter because that guy's yep. the best punter in the, in the, you know? Yeah. No, it's interesting, man. But it's, just- it's like, but it's, it's a good, but we learn, we learn what his role is or what his, um, his mindset is like high character guys, versatile guys, high energy. Like now we know what a Joe Douglas player is, which we didn't know that going into the draft. Yeah. And then I, you know, everybody's like, Oh, he's going to do this. I go, he learned from Ozzie Newsom guys. If you watch yeah. how Ozzie built those teams back in the day, it was a lot of drafting and even Philly, yeah. Philly, you know what? People can say what they want. Philly's got a nice little core there. I'm not sold on their quarterback either. They He's have some free too, though, man. <laughs> they've had some. They've had some questionable moves too. <laughs> oh but. yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is so tough being a fan, but you love them, but you hate. Yeah. And my famous, this is my famous line, and I'll tell my son, just don't get embarrassed on national TV. That's all yeah. I pray. Uh, the the butt fumble, the this, the seeing ghost. I'm like, just don't get embarrassed. Just don't get it, yep. and it's oh my god, it's heart wrenching. It, it really is. Well, that's the whole thing. But it's like you know we, what we talked about, dude. Like you want you want to have like even under Rex, like you want to have a team you're proud of, like where they they play hard, they they're 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 competent, they're physical. Like you, you want to have that back. We haven't had it. Like under Todd Bowles, we had a little bit that magical run with Fitzpatrick, which the disaster in Buffalo ended it. But you want like we haven't felt uh. it in years, dude. It's like. Like, you don't, like, like right now we're talking about, like, oh, we hope we win nine games. It could be six. We, we don't really know what we have on offense. We don't know, like, we don't, we don't have a lot of uncertainty. We have a lot of hope, and we're kind of kind of hoping this all works out. But, like, you want to have that air back about this team. Yeah, you want the swagger. And that's why, yep. believe it or not, you know, people can hate Jamal. He brings the swagger, you know. Yep. C.J. Mosley, I want to see those guys play for, for a 16-game season. I want to see what Quinnen can do. You know, you know our defensive coordinator is crazy. He's going to let yep. these guys run loose, you know. Yep. And what he no. did last year yep. with those corners, are you kidding me? If, if you look at the Jets' defense last year, they weren't that bad. And – what I love is, is like some of these linemen they got. Phillips, um, yep. the big guy Fukoski, he's huge. And they Even put Nathan pressure. Play well. yep. Oh, my God. And it's just, it, 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 it's going to be a weird season, a fun season. I just want to see Sam progress. I'm tired of people, well, it's his dish. No, he does got to step up. He's got to improve. 
He had no doubt about it. But there's no way I'm giving up on a 23-year-old quarterback when the guy that just drafted is still older than him. Yeah, dude, I, I'll never like, – that's the whole thing. Like, you know, we, we get a lot of people, oh, well, Sam this and Sam that. I'm like, how long have you been a Jet fan? Like, year? Like, do you know how many shitty quarterbacks yeah. we watch over the years? Like, this kid's got more talent than any of them. Like, it's not, it's not even close. Have, have like, they ever seen Glenn, Glenn Foley? Have they seen what Fred we went Foley, through? Man, come on. <laughs> he got hurt. He could never stay healthy. Glenn Foley. Oh, Pat Ryan. Oh, my God. They're killing me. Game. <laughs> yeah. And believe it or not, if, if it wasn't for injuries, Pennington was my man. He had no arm, yeah. but he was so smart. He, he was great. And Vinny. Vinny was great. Oh, Pennington's but, accuracy you know, was insane, too. Yeah, and with, and with Sanchez, Sanchez, you know what? He was the system. You played great defense. You ran the ball with Thomas Jones. And, and, and then what, what, you know, then what they do? They bring in the this receivers. circus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's give him Derek Mason. What are you kidding me? That, that's what Get everything was. <laughs> oh, you knew shit was I bad. Love doing, Cotri. When Cotri asked out, you knew shit was bad. Like, that's when you know that things are going in the wrong direction. And then you bring in Tebow. What are you kidding me? That was the uh, biggest circus. Terrible. I've never, I'm like, what are you, and, and then I literally, I, if I was able to punch Adam Shine in the face, bring in Tebow. Tebow he's awful. It, it's almost yep. like watching Josh Allen. Josh Allen, people love him. The dude can't hit a wide open receiver. Well, they gave him Stefan Diggs. Yeah? Let's see when he over and under throws him, how, how oh, great Stephon Diggs, Diggs, Diggs is going to be. Diggs is going to be in his face. You could see it because Diggs was getting pissed last year at Cousins. Can you imagine Diggs now when the ball's hitting his toes and everything? I can't yeah. wait for it. it. I cannot wait for that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Um, I just can't wait for the season. I can't wait for all this shit to end, what's going on. But, you yeah. know, I love the draft. I love the way they did the draft this year. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, no, I did. Instead no, the, of the, the whole is, stage. Oh yeah, dude, I like it. I like the more personal aspect of it, and it was just more. It's a less like just less gaudy. I, I I liked it, but the question I have for you is, the, the latest thing is, you know, that how the media is covering the Jets. It seems like some guys oh, have dude. agendas, some guys have narratives. Oh, uh, here it comes. On that? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm asking you. I'm asking you what you think. I I honestly hate all of our beat writers. Manish, especially number one, I can't stand him. Uh, Costello, he has an agenda. He seems like he works for the Jets PR department. Uh, Manish, when he gets bored, there's an Adam Gase every week. I mean, come on. But just, you know, Samini's all right. I mean, it's, I'm like, meh. I don't, you know, I like Connor. Connor's good. Yep. But other than that, it, it's a joke. I just would love to be a fly on the wall when Gates walks in and looks and see, sees Meta. <laughs> I would just so yeah. love to think what's going through his mind. It, it, it just is, makes it, us – and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, are other organizations like this, or is this just us? It's, that's what I always wonder because it's just – it's like you could tell who's clicking, who's chasing clicks, which is a lot of times Manish is. But Manish gets some really good scoops, but you can see who's chasing clicks. The other guys, you can see it's like it's almost like the Jets write up the article and say, "Okay, here you go, publish it." Like it's like it's so obvious yeah. what they're doing. It's like and it's it's weird to see fans kind of follow that. Where it's like, listen, we I'm just objective, man. Like I just go from my years of being a Jets fan, knowing what I know, saying, "Okay, listen, I've seen this before. This is bullshit, or maybe this can work." But it's amazing how like people don't see how the the media game gets played sometimes. It's really strange. Oh, it, it, it's a blessing and it's a curse. You know, it's, you want information, but then you're reading it. You're like, what the hell did I just read? What are you kidding me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? And then, you know, everybody's still waiting for Logan Ryan. I don't know. I, I, which I don't even know if I want to spend $10 million on him. Nope. We've got enough Get corners we just brought in. You know yep. what? Yeah. Give me a pass rusher, not Clowney. Get, bring in Everson Griffin. I'll take yep. him. Me too. You know? Give me him or Golden. I don't want Clowney. I don't want Ryan. You want to bring in Warford for, for you know, guard? By all means, bring him in. You know what? Get rid of Winters. You know, Winters is just banged up. He's never been healthy the last two years. Yeah, and no, and there's no penalty. Like we cut Winters. There's yeah. no penalty. Him yeah. or Avery. Yep. It, no, it's I, tough I like, being I like a fan, but it's great. Yeah, yeah, no, it's – and the thing <laughs> is, like, 
with, with certain with certain players, you you have like a soft spot for him, where you feel like you like like I like Brian Winters. Brian Winters is you know he he's a good guy. He plays hard, but he, he's always hurt, and then he he plays through injuries, which hurts his play. And then it's like, all right, you know what? With this ship has sailed now. We we got to move on. You know, it's just it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know this guy's drafting offensive linemen every year. No matter what, there's going to be one or two offensive linemen. Thank God, because you got a guy that he can play. You know, we've seen flashes of Sam. We've seen him. Yeah, he's got the gunslinger attitude. I don't know if that's ever going to change. Sometimes we might not want it. Sometimes just throw the ball away, man. Just throw it away. Yep. Or take a sack. Take a sack and live for another day. Like, don't, don't you know, just throw a ball. Don't throw it by Hail Mary. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I just want to see him 16-game season, season healthy. You know, his first year, he missed, what, two to three games with a bad ankle. Yep, yep. You know, so we're not seeing, you know, him. And I blame, you know, the motto, what are we going to do? <laughs> we can't do anything about that. But the offensive line, I'm watching him, and I'm like, this kid's going to get killed. He's going to end up, you know, like Carr, you know, getting sacked yep. 75 times in a year. And, and the kid was never the same. We can't have that. No, dude, I you know? agree. That's, that's the biggest – that's the whole thing for this season where it's like you want to see him play a lot better. You don't want to see him get happy feet. You want to see him comfortable in the pocket, running around, making plays. Like, it's, it's priority number one for Gase, man. It's, it's not even it's, – it's so obvious. That's why it's so weird to see so many stories coming out where it's like, oh, the pressure's on Sam. Like, dude, if anything, the pressure's on Gase to, to improve his play yeah. calling, game management, and then quarterback coach, like, which Sam should have, which he doesn't. I mean, this, this is no. there's so much pressure on his coaching staff to not even Gase with just his quarterback, with his fucking offensive line. Like, dude, like you're replacing almost four fifths of your line. Like the yeah, coaching guy, is out of premium. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, he, right? Like, if any article comes out that says anything on Darnold, like, dude, the coaching is at a premium right now on offense. Four new linemen, better quarterback play, and two new receivers. Good luck. Yeah. Exactly, and there's, that's why it's going to be so weird if, if there's not these training camps. But hopefully yeah. they're starting to open. Let them test. I've had that test. That test sucks anyway. Uh, but I just look at I look at our weapons. All right, Perryman, Crowder in the slot, Mims on the other side, Herndon, Griffin, Bell. If, Bell, if Bell's used correctly, there's no reason we can't compete with our guys, you know? Yeah. And I'm so high on Herndon and Griffin. Because Herndon, you split them out. A linebacker can't stay with him. He runs too fast. And you can't guard him with a safety because he's too big. I mean, you saw what yep. he did against Green Bay a couple of years ago. He's got flashes. No. He's just got to be healthy. No, dude, I agree. I completely agree. So, Paul, we did about, I don't know, what, 45 minutes here. What is your, your last take on this team, man? So, you you seem – Quite confident. You're thinking nine wins. So, as a Jets fan, you're encouraged with the direction they're heading. Oh, 100%. From where we were the last couple of years, you know, people like, oh, they were 10-6 and six with Bulls. You know what? That was a freak outlier year where you had, you know, a Brandon Marshall season and a Decker season. You're not going to see that. I mean, 2,000 yard receivers, but me, I just like the progression we're building. I, I actually have confidence because the last three, four years, the McCagnan drafts, there's nobody there. Nope. And then we won't even go in there. The Idstick 12, there's nobody. You know? Yeah. So I yeah. like what we're building. As long as Sam progresses, that's the biggest question mark. He has to progress. Stay healthy, and then let's go. Let it fly. Nobody in our division scares me. People are all up on Buffalo. They really, you know what? They're not that great. Well, and I, I mean, think with I our think defense, we can compete they with defense, anybody. Man. They got to. They get. Mm-hmm. To me, Buffalo is the same thing as the Jets. I mean, the Buffalo is a year ahead of us in terms of just winning and having the program together. They have a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. To me, they're like the Jets, where if Josh Allen figures out how to be a more consistent pass thrower, I mean, he, they're yeah. gonna be good, dude. They have so many freaking playmakers around him. They did. They've really done a good job building around him. Yeah, they did. They have given them weapons. But me, I'll still take Crowder over their slot receiver. Crowder, Crowder's so underrated. Yeah, yep. maybe we only got him for another year or two. You know, I'm not sold on Braxton Berrios or Vincent Smith. You know, I'm just like, whatever, man. We just we, we get our guys. We got our horses up front because that's what his thing is. We got to protect Sam. And, yep. and we got him. As Sam goes, yep. we're going to go. 
And, and Bell, use him. Let him loose, man. Put him in the slot. I don't want to see Bruce Coslett swing pass left, swing pass right. Get him out there. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, a a, not a lot of our fans know that. Dude, there's a lot of shit that happened last year. That's why I was, having melt, I was having meltdowns on a weekly basis. I'm like, I've friggin' seen this before. Like, I knew the play calls before they were even coming. Like, you knew what was going to happen. I'm like, this is ridiculous. And like, oh, you're negative, yeah. you're this, you're that. No, this is history repeating itself. And the funny thing is, as a Jet fan, when was the last time you saw a 10-yard slant? i never seen it. Uh. Plus, I see the swing passes. What are we doing? Especially when we have, we, we have Mims mismatches. Mims is a like monster. Mismatches. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, where, where's the quick slants? God, I got it on Madden every freaking play. <laughs> and we're, we're running screens. Yep. With no uh, offensive I'm, line. That's, that's the irony. It doesn't make but, any sense. Well, Paul, first of all, thank you very, very much for your time. What is the best way for everybody to follow you and interact with you about the Jets? Uh, I'm just on Twitter, man. Okay. Yep. What's your, Paul what's your head? Paul Parisi 515. Uh, oh. Paul Parisi 515. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, dude. I definitely appreciate it. We got to do this again, and I will promote this, and uh, hopefully we have a, a season we can be happy about this year. No, it can't be worse than last year, man. That's all I'm going to say. Last year was rough. <laughs> well, it can, it, it can be worse than last year. We hope it's not. <laughs> oh, God. But all right, man, thank you, and stay safe. You too, man. Have a good night. All right, you too. Bye. All right, Paul Parisi joining us from Connecticut. Uh, once again, thank him for his time. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate all the feedback on these. This was kind of an idea I shot out of the air, and it's we're just having fun with it. So, if you want to come on this show, all you got to do is message us at T Roush 21 at Talk Jets Radio. I'll talk to you guys next time.